start doing a two-page spread from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new document. I can do it from the file menu or create new document. And it comes up with my last used defaults. I'm just going to go ahead and set it back to the default defaults. <laughs> and then we'll do facing pages, which means I'll have a left and right page in my spread. I'm going to have two pages in my spread. And last but not least, the only other thing I'm going to change here is that I want a bleed. In other words, I want a little bit of space around the outside of the page itself because I want images to actually go past the edge of the paper. So we're going to do that. We're going to do half inch margins all the way around. And again, two page spread, five uh, or facing pages. And let's go ahead and say OK. Now when we say OK, it shows us page one. Where's page two? Page two is actually the next page down. So this creates our first problem is that I would love to have those two pages next to each other. The problem is by default, InDesign shuffles pages. So if you can just keep doing this all day long in the pages panel and you're still gonna have two pages that are not next to each other. So the trick here, and that is to go up to your uh, flyout menu for your pages and you're gonna turn off allow document pages to shuffle. So we just turn that off and now I can put the pages next to each other. Okay, so that's our first tip, just getting the two pages side by side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a frame, <clears throat> and this frame is just going to be for my color background. I'm just going to go in the background, it could be a photo, it could be a color. I'm just going to make mine a color to keep it simple. And I just create the frame, and now I want to fill that frame with a color. So you should always get your colors from your swatches. If you don't have a swatch that you need, just go ahead and create a new color and then add it as a swatch. So I'm just going to fill this with red, and uh, there's our swatch. So we got it red now. The only thing I don't want to do is I, I don't want this frame that I built to get moved or, you know, for InDesign to think I'm trying to place things into it. So I'm going to go ahead and lock it. So I just go up to the object menu, choose lock to lock it down. So InDesign now so shows that this is locked. We get a new indicator in CS5 and CS55 letting us know that that's locked. And anytime you want to un unlock it, just click the little lock icon. <clears throat> okay, now that that's there, I want to grab my image that I want to place on that page, actually, and have it go across the spread. So I'm going to go to my mini bridge panel, again, introduced in CS5, and the mini bridge will take me to my last folder, or you can navigate to whatever folder you need to go to, and there's the image I want. So I'll just go ahead and drag it right in from mini bridge, and it, it's letting me place it. I can put mini bridge away for now. And I'm just going to go ahead and go a little bit off the page here and just drag. And again, I don't have to hold down anything. It automatically makes it proportional now in uh, CS5 and CS55. Okay, so our subject came in. I want her actually a little bit more over to the left-hand side here. And I want her hand to be on the uh, next page. And she's bleeding off very nicely here, off to the edge of the paper. However, I do want her to be a little taller. So I'm going to zoom out. Command minus to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to hold down uh, Command and Shift on Mac PC. That would be Control Shift so that I can scale it proportionally now that it's been placed. Okay, great. So we got our image in place. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is start placing objects around it. And those objects are actually going to be text. So I'm going to go up to my File menu. I could do it from Mini Bridge or I can do it from File Place. You can do it either way. Um, I'll just go ahead and grab this since it's right here in the bridge window. And I get, a, I get my first problem that we need to solve. It's letting me know that the font Chaparral Pro, regular bold, is not installed on this machine or, or this user account. And I could install it and activate it, go find it. But just so you can sh uh, move on, you can also say find font and replace it with whatever font you do have. Now, of course, that can change the way that it looks change the line ending, so forth and so on, but in this case, it's okay. But you would usually want the font that was used um, if you're placing that font or placing that document and that font's important. But if you're grabbing a Word document, then they may have used a font that you could care less about. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this text here. And the text is so small that uh, it's called Greek text. It's actually just giving me gray bars instead of the actual text, instead of having the, having the computer try and render it. So I'm going to hit the command plus sign. PC, that would be control plus, so I can zoom in. 
great and now i'm just going to go ahead and just move this frame up a little bit because it doesn't need to be as big as it was i can move the text down and there's the word the word stats would be nice here because that's what this is but it wasn't a part of the text that's okay i can go ahead and create a new frame and i can bring it up as high as i want make that new frame about the same length then i can type in the word stats however it comes in in its default size default color so I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. We'll go ahead and change the uh, swatch to make it white, which is paper. And uh, we'll go ahead and make it bigger. We can either do it from the menu. You can type in a size if you know the exact size. Or you can do, my, do it my favorite way, which is visually, which on the Mac, that would be Command-Shift. PC, that would be Control-Shift. And the greater than symbol, which is right above your period, period. Okay, so now I can make that as big as I want. Less than will make it smaller. I got that in place. Everything looks great. All right, next, let's go ahead and move over now. We'll scroll over to the, to the right-hand side of the spread here. And there are a couple things I want to do here. First, I'm going to move her over just a little bit more. I want to put a big, giant letter I here. And I'm going to place some text next to it. The text does not have the letter I. It just starts off with thoughts. And I'm going to say, or I want this basically to say, I thought of course, part of the text. So let's go ahead and uh, create another frame. We'll just make a nice, giant, skinny frame here with our text tool or type tool, and we'll just type capital I. Now, same thing. I want that to be bigger, so I hit Command A to highlight it or drag across it to highlight it. And a PC, that'd be Control A. And I don't know how big to make it. Uh, is it 24 points? Nope, not big enough. If it, is it 36 points or 48 points? Not big enough. So my favorite way, Command, Shift, Mac, PC, Control, Shift, and just hit, keep hitting the period, which is greater than, until I get it big enough. Now, at some point, it's going to disappear because I've made it too big to fit in that skinny frame. So just go uh, less than to bring it back down in size. So I've got my giant eye. Actually, it doesn't need to be that tall. And next thing I want to do is bring in the text that's going to go next to that. So we'll just go ahead and uh, grab our text from Mini Bridge here. There's the I thought text. We'll just drag it in. Oops, but I let go in that frame. So it replaced my image. Let's undo. Now let's try it one more time. There we go. And now we'll just go ahead and drag out a frame right about there. And there's our, our I thought text. Now, the problem is I don't want that text to cover the hand. I kind of would love it if it would wrap around the hand, which means I want to do a text wrap on my photo. Now, you can do a text wrap on a photo that's been cut out like this. As you notice, this photo has no background. That's why we can still see the red. That's why we can see it uh, kind of bleed off. So it came from Photoshop with the background already knocked out, but it doesn't know how to do a text wrap. So let's do that. Let's select the photo. With the photo selected, <clears throat> let's go to our text wrap panel, which will be under your view menu. And the text wrap I want is the irregular wrap. Now it's gonna, it's gonna cause a problem. So the minute I click it, everything disappears. Because it doesn't know that I want it to wrap around the photo itself. So it thinks I want it to wrap around everything then this whole bounding box. So everything disappeared because it's trying to wrap. We're gonna fix that. First thing we need to do is instead of saying same as clipping, which is the default, we're gonna change it to, we can either do um, Photoshop path if there is one, or my alpha channel would work too. But in this case, I'm just gonna have Photoshop detect the edges of the pixels that are there. So it did it and it brought back everything I need, including uh, wrapping the text nicely around the hand. So uh, again, because I'm doing it around the photo, this is not interfering with the photo, the eye's not interfering with the photo, just the text coming around the hand. So that worked out great. So we can put text wrap away. Last but not least, I have some text to go down here and actually we can make this frame a little smaller. We don't need it to be any, as big as it is. Great. So we'll just go back to mini bridge one more time and we have this uh, local fe feature text. We'll drag, oh, see, I did it again. I keep dragging in that frame. Now that's why we lock things. So if I lock that, it wouldn't let me do it. Let's undo. 
and yep, let's, we need to drag it in one more time, but just don't let go inside of the frame, let go outside of the frame, then you're good. Okay, so now, even though I let go outside of the frame, I can now move into the frame and drag out my new frame for my text. Now, I don't know how that text is going to look. Let's zoom in on it. Again, Command Plus. And while this would be okay, I'd love for this text to be in two columns. So we'll just go ahead and go up on the number of columns to two. And I want it a little bit more balanced. So we can do it a couple ways. We can make the frame shorter. We can make the frame skinnier. And that would kind of balance it out. Right about there. Okay, and then we can move the frame wherever we want, kind of center it right there on that line, or we can, doesn't have to be centered on that line, and if we start moving it up, it'll start wrapping around the arm, so that's actually kind of a cool effect. Why don't we do that? And we'll just balance that out a little bit more. Now, when I did it, it pushed some of the text, and we got this red plus sign. That's letting me know that there's text that isn't being displayed because the frame is too small. So I can go ahead and just pull that down a little bit to display that, or I can make the frame a little wider to accommodate that extra text. And I think that looks much, much better. So there you have it, in a matter of a few minutes, going from no document to an InDesign document laid out. Now, if I wanna kinda of see it without these bounding boxes and blue lines, I can do the preview mode, which is down here on the toolbar, or just hit the letter W, as long as you're not in the text tool. And this is the way our document would look printed. You can zoom in on it a little bit so we can read it, but, that looks great, except the photo doesn't look all that great. It looks kind of jagged. And that's because, by default, InDesign does a typical display. So if we highlight the uh, photo, we can go up to our object menu, display performance, high quality display, to kind of render that photo a little bit better. Now we're looking at it the way it would look printed 